God and worship God. And sometimes if a war continued for a long time, they would actually take many of their warriors that were tired and send them back to where the altar was so that they could offer sacrifices and they could relax and be refreshed in the presence of God. So it refers to worship. And the reason they went out in the first place was because they went out against nations who had refused God and they went out to show that God is the God of all the world. And if these nations would have repented, then they could have lived with harmony many times with the people of God, but they didn't repent. So they went out as a witness to the whole world that the God of Israel was the true God. So now go to your right again, and this is where we'll, we'll park. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Just to the right, if you're in Joshua, you'll see Joshua judges Ruth. I don't know why he judged her, but it's just a way to remember, you know, where the Bible's books are. Joshua judges Ruth. And then you'll see 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel 18. Now, you remember Solomon said, my father knew how to do this, but I don't know how to do this. You remember? Okay. Watch this. This talks about his father, David. 1 Samuel 18, verse 12. 1 Samuel 18, 12. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, with David, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his presence and made him his captain over a thousand, and he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Therefore, when Saul saw that he behaved very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. He was a leader that showed the people how to come into the presence of God. Obviously, David is one of the greatest worshipers of all time, but he was also a great warrior. All right, so I want to tell you three things about worship. We're talking about coming in, and coming in, I believe, refers to worship. Number one, worship brings God's presence in our lives. Worship brings God's presence in our lives. Remember these verses. Just stay in 1 Samuel 18. Verse 12 says, Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. Verse 14, and David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. David understood what it was to be with God. Now listen, when we talk about coming in and going out, I'm talking about coming into the presence of God, and listen to me, but not going out from the presence of God, but going out with the presence of God. You see, the preposition here is very important in this statement. For the Lord was with David. The reason Saul was afraid of him was because the Lord was with him and had departed from Saul. The reason God was with David was because David came into God's presence, met with God, and then when he would go out, he didn't go out from the presence of God. He went out with the presence of God. This is very important for you to get. There is no reason for you to go out without God. There is no reason to go out until you come in. You have nothing to go with. Jesus said to the disciples, go into all the world, but before you go, stay in Jerusalem until you're endued with power. Because if you go out without the Holy Spirit, nothing's going to happen. You need to go out with the Holy Spirit. Now, when we talk about this, um, I grew up in a, a small, smaller church. Many of us probably grew up in a smaller church in, than Gateway because there just weren't a lot of larger churches years ago. And I remember in this church, there was one front door. And I know that I'm sure there was a side door, but no, we, didn't, we never went in the side door. There was one front door. It was a white frame church. Some of you maybe have been to church like this, but I remember every time we would walk up, the pastor was at the door. I mean, we would walk up and the pastor would say, good to see you. Good to see you. God bless you. Good to see you. And then when we would leave, where was the pastor? At the door. Good to see you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. See you next week. And then I remember one day watching him, he closed the doors. I thought he lived there. Because when we got there, he was there. And when we left, he was there. And he locked the doors. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure he just, he lived, he waited. You know, when he opened the doors, good to see you. Been waiting seven days to see y'all. Praise the Lord. You know? Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's, that's great, you know, if, if the church is the size where a pastor could do that. But think about this. I think sometimes we get that impression of, that the pastor represents Jesus. 
And, and so when, when we come to church, there's Jesus. Good to see you. How, how was your week? Everything okay out there? Okay, good. Come on in. And then when we get ready to go, God bless you. you have a good week. Have, have a good week. Well, Jesus, would you like to come with us? Oh, no. I've already been out there before. It, it didn't work out so well. Uh, I, I'll just stay right here in the building. And I'll be protected here in the church house, and, and, and y'all go out and, by yourselves, and I hope you make it. You know, some of you probably won't return, but I hope you make it out there. I'll be waiting right here for you. Okay, that's not what Solomon was talking about. That's not what David was talking about. That's not what Moses was talking about. We need to learn how to come into his presence, but then we go out with his presence also. All right? Let me read you one more verse on this. Jeremiah 17, verse 19 says, Then the Lord said to me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, by which the kings of Judah come in. See, this phrase is, is just all through Scripture. And by which they go out. And in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say to them, Hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all inhabitants of Jerusalem, who enter by these gates. Thus says the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, nor carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, nor do any work but hallow the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. Okay, why did God harp on this so much? I don't want you carrying any burden on the Sabbath day. And sometimes people think, well, the Sabbath is Sunday, the Sabbath was actually Saturday, but we know Colossians tells us the Sabbath was a picture of the rest that he wants us to enter into. So listen to me very carefully. Here's what I think God was saying. I want at least one day a week where you admit to me you can't carry it on your own. I'd like at least one day a week where you lay down what you're carrying, you lay down the burden of your family, you lay down the burden of your job, you lay down the burden of your business, you lay down the burden of your kids, you lay it down and you come to me and just meet with me at least one day a week. I want you to worship before me. The, the word worship, by the way, in, in the Greek, it's proskuneo. Proskuneo. It, it's where we get the word proskuneo, we get the word prostrate. It literally means to put your face to the ground. Here's the amazing thing, too. In the Hebrew, it means the same thing. In the Hebrew, the word is like, you know, I can't say it. Uh, but 